<clears throat> my perspective is uh, anthropological philosophy of culture. This is the position. Okay. okay, thank you. The psychotherapeutic effects of prayer. The title of this paper may suggest that it takes into account data provided by psychologists or therapists on the application of prayer as a therapeutic method. Oh, God bless you. <clears throat> However, no such data exists. Prayer is not a neutral method used by therapeutic purposes. Its therapeutic effects are secondary, not constituting its real goal. Studies on prayer and its role in people's existential experience <coughs> excuse me, remain outside the scope of science. Although towards the end of the 20th century, experimental studies began to be carried out tasting the effect that prayer can have on the health of patients. Still, such studies don't tell us what prayer is or what kinds of prayer they are. There seems to be little certainty if we can actually learn to pray, to pray and we do not understand how people could teach themselves to pray. Lastly, we fail to grasp anything about the very experience of praying. The scientific categories of cause and effect offer a Procrustean framework for analyzing prayer because they disregard a large portion of knowledge related to human existence. In order to comprehend the gravity and significance of prayer, it becomes necessary to employ other descriptive categories, motivation, intention, meaning, experience, anticipation, trust, hope, and honesty. Analogous categories are also employed within psychotherapy, though we cannot identify the latter with prayer despite the fact that both activities are rooted in specific teachings and can have healing effects. Psychotherapists receive, <coughs> again, sorry. Psychotherapists receive certificates that allow them to practice. These certificates, we read in the psych psychotherapy handbook, quote, are awarded only to those who have graduated in psychology or medicine and have completed specialist training in psychotherapy. Such training consists of three parts. First, didactic preparation, meant to teach theory and introduce practical skill, skills used by psychotherapists. One's own psychotherapy or participation in psychotherapy training, and the third, practicing psychotherapy under the supervision of experienced therapists, unquote. Those who pray <coughs> do not receive any certificates, although certain teachings are necessary in this respect as well. Lessons on this subject are found in the Gospels and in Acts of the Apostles. For example, Matthew writes, quote, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly, unquote. The Mark says, quote, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Apostolic, uh, unquote, apostolic letters emphasize that prayer is indispensable in all, in all life situation, situations as a way of calming down and that one ought to pray not just for one's own sake, but for all people. <clears throat> the education of the therapist is carried out from a third person perspective, since it revolves around transferring skills and teaching how to remain distanced. Learning to pray, on the other hand, 
is always done in the first person because prayer expresses and shapes human spirituality. Certain therapeutic currents acknowledge prayer as an activity and helps to heal. These include the humanistic approach, it is phenomenological existential one. Therapist also represents this perspective, attempt to broaden psychotherapy's specialist boundaries by embracing existential knowledge about humanity. It is argued in this current that without accounting for world views, value systems, and religious beliefs, it is impossible to engage in effective therapy. As Carl Gustav Jung argues, quote, practical experience shows that many neuroses are caused primarily by the fact that people blind themselves to their own religious promptings because of the childish passion for rational enlightenment. It is high time, he says, the psycho psychologists of today recognized that we are no longer dealing with dogmas and creeds, but with the religious attitude per se, whose importance as a psychic function can hardly be overrated." Unquote. Viktor Frankl, creator of logotherapy, states that, quote, it is unnecessary to speak with disdain about those who are led to pray by necessity. There is no need to argue that a prayer in need is less honest, less appropriate, or less natural." Unquote. <clears throat> Regardless of the respect for religious beliefs and prayer shown within the humanistic current of psychotherapy, prayer cannot be regarded as a therapeutic method. It is not a tool in the hands of therapists. Prayer retains its existential autonomy. It has its own goals and constitutes the act of communication with the other. It belongs with the patients who pray in order to fulfill the needs of their souls, which can be taken into consideration during the, which can be taken into consideration during the therapeutic process, but cannot be manipulated by the therapist as their freedom is restricted even within the framework of the phenomenological existential approach that orients itself towards the spiritual. The transcendental condition of prayer, one without which we cannot speak of any therapeutic effects, is faith. Faith. <coughs> the experience of faith is neither simple nor explicit. Quote, if we are to be honest and self-critical about it, Father Hrynevich observes, we have to admit that our faith often borders on unbelief or disbelief, unquote. These words provoke questions about the relation between prayer and faith, questions that are not easy to answer. Do the quality and strength of faith determine the character of prayer? Can prayer overcome disbelief? Does disbelief affect the quality of prayer? Moreover, there can be no certainty as to the extent to which the character of our prayer is determined by the firmness of our faith and the extent to which it is shaped by our anthropological beliefs. The idea of humanity formulated by Pope Benedict XVI that we are not some causal and meaningless product of evolution. Each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed, each of us is loved, each of us is necessary. Releases a potential for long lasting and intense prayer. The apophatic concept of humanity does not carry with itself the conviction about our emotional rootness in transcendent love. It neither eliminates the need to pray nor strengthens it. Defining faith is not a strictly logical task. It is rather connected with the experience of humanity existing in the course of history, which is difficult to convey in strict and precise formulas. Entries on faith in theological dictionaries can run for more than a dozen pages. 
Faith is defined there as a personal relation, an act of reason, an act of will, an act of trust, an act of affirming that God has re relieved, uh, re excuse me, that God has revealed, and finally as virtue. Doubting is admissible as an indispensable basis for rational faith. Apart from dictionary-like definitions, there are also metaphorical ones, such as, quote, faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of trust, as well as accounts of existential experiences such as Kierkegaard's claim that the essence of faith lies in absurdity, while faith itself is a madness of passion, demanding effort and courage. In this view, faith is the trusting leap into the abyss. Kierkegaard writes, quote, I am unable to make the movement of faith. I cannot shut my eyes and plunk confidentially into the absurd. For me, that is impossibility. This courage I lack, unquote. <clears throat> the main intellectual benefit of Kierkegaard's conception of faith is ennoblement of the individual. He extracts the individual from the collective and grants her the kinds of importance that makes her stand above the universal, legitimizing her separateness by positing, positioning her in a specific relation to the absolute to God. This specific relation is the experience of faith understood neither as a cognitive process nor as an act of intellect or will, but rather as a passionate madness. The experience of faith understood in this way is terrifying. It is difficult to ward off the impression that in this account, the boundary between faith and madness is quite thin. It remains necessary to clarify how methodical doubting can serve as the basis of rational faith. It is the attitude of a person who develops deeper inquires, asks, who, who, sorry, the person who delves deeper, inquires, asks, why? Perhaps because she feels that she can no longer directly access the original trust, the original covenant with the sacred. What for? Perhaps because she wants to believe more, desiring to deepen her faith through reasoning, through understanding oneself within the surrounding world. It is with culture that has been transforming for centuries. She wishes to comprehend products of culture, prayers, lamentations, or music, by understanding them as words directed to God, not ones about God. She desires to experience through reasoning, Methodical doubting is, rooting, is rooted in the conviction that we can access the original trust indirectly by way of understanding the words of symbols found in culture. Every symbol is a manifestation of mankind's relationship with the sacred, while questioning expresses our longing for the original experience of the covenant between God and humanity. However, the capacity to pose questions does not, have to does not have to testify to this longing. It can be alienated and separated from the reality it interrogates, just like many other human capacities. After all, we can freely discuss, we, we can freely discourse about all kinds of experiences without having lived them. Many factors have combined to make faith and culture be considered as separate elements. This certainly, bothers, this certainly bothered Pope Paul VI, who clearly states in Evangelii Nuntiandi that, please quote, the split between the gospel and culture is without a doubt the drama of our time, unquote. However, it is surprising that the anthropological philosophy of culture has seemingly embraced this division. Although it does describe, 
and analyze various forms of experience, ranging from metaphysical to aesthetic, moral, mystical, and even pathological, it does not pay my much attention in its interpretation to the experience of faith and prayer, leaving this issue to theologians and priests. However, this kind of experience encompasses the entirety of, of the human being, more so than any other. Thus, any attempts at characterizing prayer, its experience, as well as various forms and effects, necessarily involve theology, philosophical anthropology, and psychology. The experience of faith can be traced in the oldest sources of European culture, in the texts produced by ancient Greeks, and in the Old Testament. It is also present in other cultures and religions. However, this paper focuses primarily on European culture. In what follows, we shall adopt the distinction explicitly made by Pascal, quote, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, not of philosophers and scholars, certainty, joy, certainty, emotion, sight, joy, unquote. Pascal wrote these words on the parchment scrap in 1652, 54, after the accident. He fell under the hoofs of horses. How does the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob differ from the God of philosophers and scholars? The description does not really concern God, but rather our attitude towards him. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a God whom we experience and praise. He affects us and is the addressee of our prayers. We complain to him and sometimes even accuse him. The God of philosophers, on the other hand, is the object of reflection. He is analyzed, described, and accounted for through humanity's own intellectual formulas. As Heidegger remarked, quote, men can neither pray nor sacrifice to this God, neither fall to his knees in awe, nor can he play music and dance before this God, unquote. Among other factors, this distinction served as the basis for distinguishing two types of theology, rational theology and the theology of living prayer. The former wishes to make arguments, proof theses, and achieve certainty. It speaks of God and wishes to gain control over him. The latter, on the other hand, rather speaks to God and listens to him. The God of faith is of living God. Prayer. <clears throat> we learn about prayer and its positive influence of human psyche in many areas of knowledge, theology, philosophy, psychology, literature, and everyday life. Whereas the first three, uh, the first three offer reflection on prayer, but last to provide us with the certain testimony to the experience of prayer. Thus, they motivate scientific and experimental study of prayer's positive effects. Also, testimonies are taken into account within philosophical, also testimonies are taken into account within philosophical and theological reflection. They really serve as its basis. However, they express the state of our psyche and allow to develop the conviction about the influence that prayer can have on mental health. In our considerations of the effect that prayer can have on the psychological well-being of men, we take into account both the content of prayers and the very act of praying. The two are difficult to separate and attempts to do so are often abundant in reflection on prayer. Focusing on the content of prayer, representatives of this approach speak of the act of praying because the activity itself would have the power to heal. Pascal draws attention to this when he argues that prayer is a virtue in itself due to the work that is done in it. 
Prayer facilitates distancing oneself from the chaos of thoughts and feelings and shifting focus towards the which is other. When practiced regularly, prayer can also help to generate a habit in a person. A 21, oh no, woman, it's, it's really a bit here. It's too much. Okay. The positive effect, effect the prayer, uh, the positive effect that prayer or act of praying can have on our mood is touched upon by old teacher. Quote, I feel alone in the hubbub of the street. No one expects me there, burdened down with loneliness. I notice the open door of, I notice the open, again, burdened down with loneliness, I notice the open door of a secondary school church. How lovely that it is open. I go inside. Interesting. On a bustling street filled with people, I felt alone and useless, hampering others in queues. However, in the silence of the church, I found that I found out that someone is expecting me. I found a friend. He told me that I am useful. How great it is to know that one can be useful to someone else. This is probably one of the reasons why people are afraid of retiring and of jubilee." Unquote. The process of recovering related to regain face is described by Tolstoy, who neither analyzes nor preaches, simply describing his own experience. Quote, I was overcome with horror, and I began to pray to the one whom I thought that he might help me. And the, and the more I prayed, the more clear it became to me that he didn't hear me and that there was absolutely no one I could turn to. My heart full of despair over the fact that there is no God. I cry, Lord, have mercy on me, save me. Oh Lord, my God, show me the way. But no one had mercy on me and I felt that my life had come to a stop. Tolstoy's piercing account covers loss of faith, over-intellectualization, severe depression, and the sense of power that pulled him away from life. Quote again, and there I was a fortunate man carrying rob from my room where I was alone every night as I un undressed so that I would not hang myself from the beam between closets, unquote. Finally, he arrives at the conclusion that there can be no life without God, unquote. Gradually and imperceptibly, life force returned to him, just like it won wanted before. We have no clue how Tolstoy developed his final conviction or how he was regenerated, but prayer was present in this process. Prayer is practically undefinable. Its attributes depend on one's assumptions, both theological and philosophical, as well as on individual sensibility. Its many aspects are difficult to distinguish. Those that large constitute an expression of inner experience tend to have a more metaphorical character than those that are rooted in historical and theological studies. Both approaches, however, both approaches, however, focus either on the functions or intentions of prayer. For the purpose of this article, I shall adopt the following definition of prayer. It is a multi-element psychosomatic intentional structure. Intentionality would denote here the opening towards that which transcends the individual towards the in, in, invisible, unexpected, and inexplicable. Prayer, Wittgenstein mentioned, means feeling that the world's meaning is outside the world." Unquote. Elements of this structure include all layers of human psyche, ranging from various emotions 
and feelings, as well as thoughts, moods, and motivations to will itself, from unconscious to conscious factors, including somatic ones. I have too many pages, so. Um, when we analyze the prayers of Socrates, St. Thomas Aquinas, or Rabbi Maggid, we encounter clearly defined contents. In their prayers, all three ask for the realization of particular moral ideal. They experience a certain lack in their lifestyle or are anxious about possible experiencing certain imperfections. They ask for the strengths necessary to realize those ideals they consider to be virtues. Such prayers could be called preventive prayers. Among the doctor's duties, writes Frankel, there is the task of preventing suffering. Socrates asks for moral and aesthetic perfection, for the ideal of kalokagatya. He knows what he needs and who he would like to be. So he asks for the possibility to realize this ideal. Quote, dear Pan and all gods here, grant that I may become beautiful within and that my exter external possessions may be congruent with my inner state. May I take wisdom for wealth and may I have just as much gold as a moderate person and no one else could bear and carry by himself. Have I missed anything out, Fedrus? This prayer will do for me, unquote. <clears throat> Similar questions could be asked with regard to the prayer said by Rabbi Maggid. Quote, read them us from, from envy of our comrades. Let no envy arise in our hearts. Grant us so to act that all shall see the merits in our comrades and not their lacks and that we, each one of us, speak with his comrades in the way of veraciousness, which is pleasing in the sight. Amen. May this be the will." Unquote. Saint Thomas also asks for help and support in his famous prayer. He knows that old age involves and wishes to avoid senile behavior. His prayer is about becoming self-conscious and gaining self-control. Acts of praying allow to focus on the states described in the prayer. This serves as a starting point for planning desire mode, for planning the desired mode of action. And because I love this prayer, I will read the, almost the entire prayer. <laughs> oh Lord, you know better than I do that I am growing old. <laughs> And one day I shall become an aged man. Save me from the fatal, ha fatal habit of having something to say on every subject and on every occasion. Relieve me of the desire to straighten everyone's individual root. Make me serious, but not grim. Helpful, but not imposing. I pity that I cannot make use of all the resources of wisdom I have. But you know, O oh Lord, that I would like to remain a couple of friends till the very end. Release my mind from getting lost in infantile details and grant me the wing so that I can swiftly proceed to the heart of the matter. Uh, I do not ask for the grace of taking pleasure in stories of other people's suffering, but give me the patience to hear them all. I do not have the odyssey to ask you for better memory, but I do ask for more humility and less unflinching self-confidence when my memories appear to contradict those of others. Grant me the laudable conviction that I can mistake sometimes. Make me amicable to others, although it is difficult to stand some of them. Grant me the gift of noticing 
good things in unexpected places and discovering surprising virtues in people. Bestow on me, O Lord, the grace of being able to talk to them about this. Amen. Conclusions. Prayer. <clears throat> Prayer is neither psychotherapy nor one of many therapeutic methods. Its goal is self-development. Its goal is self-developmental and the enhancement and the enhancement of one's spiritual powers by connecting with transcendence. Nevertheless, practicing prayer contributes to the improvements of one's inner well-being, which allows one to function better in everyday life. This effect could be called, in more colloquial terms, the psychotherapeutic role of prayer. To put it in the most general terms, prayer first of all, facilitates increasing self-consciousness by giving expression to all of the mind's elements while praying. Secondly, it can naturally develop into a habit when said often. Thirdly, it helps one become more detached from oneself, discouraging people from focusing too much on their misfortunes. Fourthly, it allows one to notice the possibility to rebuild one's own life thanks to God's help. Fifthly, it sustains the hope that even if one lost everything, one would still have the omnipotent and merciful God. Sixthly, it allows one to acknowledge the rank of one's existence by way of conversing with God. Seventhly, it calms down. Finally and idly, it helps in shaping subjectivity by consolidating one's self-reliance. This form of independence has its origin in the autonomous character of prayer. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Leszczynska, for this very interesting and rich talk. Uh, I think we have uh, 15 minutes for questions. Michał Łuczewski. Wow, no, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, okay, go ahead. No, I, I, I was, uh, uh, I'm very thankful for, for your presentation and it was not actually, you know, only intellectual presentation, but really spiritual one. For me, uh, and uh, it made me think about uh, the notion of prayer. Uh, shouldn't we deepen the notion of prayer? Because you present in the prayer as if it was just one one concept, one uh, reality. And I was thinking about John Paul II, uh, about multi dimensions uh, of his prayer, uh, that he was praying all the time. It struck me that he was praying all the time especially when he spoke with somebody, especially with his enemies. So the uh, uh, durance of prayer, I think, is very important. He also prayed uh, uh, before taking some very important decisions. So, so it was not that he was praying all the time, but there were some very important decisions he was to take. And for example, in that case, the prayer was much deeper because he would go on a short pilgrimage along the way of the cross. Uh, he was also... Uh, he was also praying, uh, and it, for, for the first time it made me think how prayer was important for him, when a friend of his from seminary recalled that once uh, he met uh, a cleric, young cleric, seminarian, Karl Wojtyła, uh, in church, and he was reading something, because uh, yeah, he was reading something. And then he asked himself, what Karl Wojtyła, that young 20-some-year-old Karl Wojtyła, what is he reading? And then he found out that he was preparing himself uh, to take exams. So he was reading the history of the Catholic Church. And then his friend quips on saying that it is no wonder that the man who read the history of the church in front of the Holy Sacrament now is changing uh, the history of the church. So uh, I could just go on more and more, but I, I, I just want to ask you, shouldn't we, taking, uh, taking as examples those 
great man of prayer, deepen uh, our understanding of prayer, and not just saying this is prayer, but that prayer has multi dimensions. And just to finish my thought, prayer was also bodily, uh, uh, it was also uh, bodily practice for him yeah. during liturgy. Mm -hmm. during pilgrimages, during Way of the Cross, and also during uh, staging uh, of, of, of plays? Well, basically, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, we should, we should also analyze this experience which we have, which we know about the experience of John Paul II. I didn't know about it. This is, I, 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 it's my first, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the first was uh, this is my first talk about praying. I didn't, I, didn't, I mean, the experience of praying, uh, it's a new topic for me, so I didn't, I didn't, I mean, it is such an amount of literature, it's, it's just terrible, it's just terrible. And so many different types of praying, and so many different types of examples of someone who prays and who experiences something, and someone who prays and does not experience anything. That is very difficult to make the, you know, synthetic, synthetic, um, synthetic, uh, out, synthetic, what? Synthetic what? Help picture, me. picture, or <laughs> definition. <laughs> synthesis. Or synthesis. It's very difficult. But uh, thank you for this. And uh, uh, bodily, yes, bodily uh, is very often, uh, bodily participate in praying. And not only in Catholic Church, but also in other churches. If you, if you, if you see at the Muslim, they always do like this, yeah? Catholics also, they, I mean, colleagues of mine who are not Catholics, they always laugh. At, laugh means ridicule, ridicule Catholics that they always dumb and dumb, dumb and dumb. I mean, <laughs> what kind of praying is that, they, 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 they say. But it is a kind of involvement of body in pray. If, in, in pray. Yes, that's true. I think that was also implied in your definition. You said it's a yeah. Psychosomatic, yeah. Yeah, psychosomatic experience. It was important, it was mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, next question was probably from Samuel Hughes, then from uh, Dr. Priest, and then from Dr. Kuralia. So I just, so extremely interesting, many thanks. I just want to ask, um, given the considerations you've raised, do you see there as being any prospect for sort of secular equivalents of prayer, or do you think those will encounter deep problems? I didn't understand the question. So, mean secular equivalence? so people, people who are not religious but okay. who are interested okay. in prayer, is, is there some? Sure. There is a, there is a tendency right now to say about secular prayer, and the colleagues of mine who are, let's say, green, let's call them green. Okay, are you? Green. Green. In what sense? A political green. sense? In political sense, yeah. Green Party. Green Party. I'm not a member of the Green Party. <laughs> Good. But you are green. So you are green. At least your suite is green. <laughs> this is how we say, you know, coll colloquially. They say, uh, they say, I talked to them recently, I mean, two days ago even about it, and they say that uh, mindfulness and responsibility and troska. Care. And care is the prey, is the secular prey. But I don't think that we can, can call these activities praying. It's not a prey. It's a wonderful attitude. And if I am, let's say, okay, why don't I agree with it? Because it does not lead me outside of my... Um, mm, Immanent. Ego, uh, personality, person. Immanent. Immanent. Ima immanence, yeah. It's a uh, horizontal perspective. And I need this, you know... Um, Vertical dimension. You know, wait, wait, that's right. <laughs> 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 I need this transcendental perspective. Why do I need it? Because then you cannot answer for my question. Why do you care? And, I mean, because of business? Or because of what? Why do you care? And I need to have the, um, the source of my values. I don't have to agree with it, but I need to discuss it. I need to quarrel. This motivates me to be, I think, better, I, mean, I hope. <laughs> this is how I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean. 
Uh, the next question is from Dr. Priest. Thank you very much. Um, during your talk, you mentioned or you quoted uh, um, prayer being words to God, not about God. And this is very important. yes, well, I thought of, of there's, there's, there's another dimension you, that could be added. So, so words to God, but also with God. It's a triadic relationship, and I owe um, this. I owe thinking about this to two Jewish philosophers. One is Martin Buber, of course, uh, but also, <laughs> but also uh, in England we have a, a, a Professor Naomi Aylin at Warwick, who wrote a book on joint attention, which changed my life because it's given me a way of thinking about prayer as triadic. You you work with God to God. Um, and that's very important because that gives you the, not just self-consciousness, but also you consciousness. Okay. This is a very good question, thank you. But what would you say about uh, negative attitude, about contradiction? Uh, what do you think about contradiction with God? Like Lozenzweig talk about it, you know? We don't, we, to God, but not necessarily with God. That we contradict God. We uh, 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 provoke We provoke God. So is it with God? Provoking is with God. Is provoking with God? You can you can have a, uh, an argument with someone you love. Yeah, but I don't have argument. I provoke you. Successfully. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, this is, so these are very, I, mean, I, I quoted Rosenzweig right now, and this is why I said about provoking God, because he is speaking about it all in his books. So this is why I, I think this is the very difficult problems. Uh, so the next question from Dr. Korali, and then we have one more question one, one, one. from. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I like this topic, actually, because I think that Prayer is an important moment for everyone who is religious in one way or another. Uh, but I would be interested in the negative sides of it. Because I th negative sides of prayer. Of prayer, yeah. I will explain it. For example, the people who convert or who used to um, take drugs or something like that, and then suddenly they, they, they just replace drugs with the prayer practices. What it means uh, that, do you think from a psychological point of view now, you are a sociologist I, I presume as well, um, how do people understand the prayer or, or some, sometimes the people can win the situation or win against other people, become very militant because they are winning with God, they pray to God with their understanding of God. So, for example, they have problems in the family or in, this, in the society, but rather than confronting the problems, they will visit churches, they will go around for charismatic events, or just to nourish his, their, their, their own uh, wishes or whatever they want. So, how do you think, there is a, what, what's the difference between praying and psychological... Um, Moment, moment, moments or, or problems they can arise from from prayer as well because if 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 you say to such people it's wrong they'll say no 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 it's not wrong because it's religious I'm a good Catholic I'm a good Jew but because if because it's religious it's safe but I don't I don't think so it's always the case so it's just yeah 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 thank you uh, the, the, uh, magic it is a magic element in prayer. This is what you are talking about. So, of course, it is not pray. Because pray is, yeah, I mean, they think that they are pray, but they don't. But, but see, the problem is that uh, if you pray, you cannot force God to do what you pray about. You, they do. Exactly, this is why it is the element of magic. If we always, spotikamy, uh, meet in the praise, and if you pray, you have this pray. It's a very difficult. It's a very difficult because you have to be split inside. In what? No, 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 no. Listen to me. And but but <laughs> no, not pray, but listen. <laughs> because 
see, you have to split, you have to be, you have to, you split inside. In one way, you desire, you ask for something. At the same time, you have to, you have to, uh, you, 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 have, you, have, you have to keep in mind that God doesn't have to fulfill your desire. And this is very, very difficult. It is very difficult. For business people, for Petrify, how to change the, from wrong train to the right train? Yes, but friend. let them pray as they wish. <laughs> Why do you want to change them? <laughs> I don't want to change them. I just want, want to ask you how would you deal. You don't how I, how, you no. Don't I don't. So you think it's fine? Yeah. Could we both use the microphone? We're recording. <laughs> we're recording that what started. should I do? Well, he used that microphone, and they, they oh, use this okay. microphone, and everyone will be heard. So you think it's fine, for example, that someone who is a good Catholic, or thinks it's a good Catholic, who prays or finds refugees in prayers or adorations once a week or twice a week, go to charismatic events, but at the same time is... Uh, opinionated or militant or something in, in everyday life. So how, how would you, obviously we are making judgments now, I'm making my judgment, but how could we approach these people within the same tradition? So how, what's the psychological way or medical way of dealing with such phenomenon? I'm not asking this because I have this problem. I'm asking <laughs> this because um, I see this very often. But do you have a real problem? No, I don't is have. It real? I mean, I have many problems, <laughs> but not that one, I think. That's no, no, but is it a real problem for you? I think it's, it's, it can be a problem, yeah, because it affects oh, okay. uh, social behaviors, it affects behavior in the family, it's, Maybe it affects it many things. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, I didn't yeah. think about it. So any Theoretic kind of prayer... So Theoretically, I know how to answer, but practically, I have no idea. I think the priest can do that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they oh, yeah. often nourish the same thing. You have yes. priest here, so he has... Okay, the next question is from... Uh, sorry. Uh, short, qu Tomasz uh, short question or, or reflection. You have uh, concentrated mostly on the well, individual prayer, yes? Yes, that's correct. However, in my opinion, sometimes, uh, also when we speak about well, some, some psychological problems also, uh, probably very important is also community prayer. Uh, small community prayer, uh, in uh, liturgy, beautiful That's liturgy. Correct, correct. So um, maybe it is not only individualistic. Of, of course, always prayer is very individual, but, some, but it also has the, its uh, the social or communi community uh, aspect. Thank you. That's correct. That's true. But I, did, I, I, did, I couldn't say everything. I mean, the, the reflection about prayers, makes the differences between different types of prayer. And of course, whatever you said is, is true, but I didn't talk about it. It is a prayer, of course. Uh, okay, uh, we have uh, still two small questions. One is from Mikołaj Sławkowski Rode. Oh, um, mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for, 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 for a wonderful talk. Uh, I have a very small question. So at least sometimes uh, when we pray, we hope that God will answer uh, our prayers. On your psychosomatic, self-reflexive uh, account of prayer, what does it mean for a prayer to be answered? What would count uh, as a prayer being answered on that account? This is what I said. This is, this is why it is so difficult, because it is really difficult. Because you have to say, look, do you remember the Christ, Jesus Christ pray? God, take this away from you, but let your will happen. It, this is very, very difficult to have the, these two contradictory things in your mind. But you have to podporządkować swoją wolę. You have to subordinate your will to the will of God, if you believe in it. And this is very difficult. Okay, it is difficult. I mean, what can I do? <laughs> and the uh, very last question, uh, also a very short one. To, to się pan pytał o to, tak? Czy nie? Nie zupełnie. Okay, dobrze, przepraszam. I would like to say thank you very much for this very interesting uh, speech. It, I mean, it, 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 it touches our hearts and our emotions uh, very well. Thank it's you. very close to our 
to our needs. And um, I would say, I would, I would like to, um, to underline the one thing you, you said, that the, the really meaning of a prayer is to be connected to God, to feel connected to God, to our, to our creator and to our tenderest father. And to feel a child of him. It's a really meaning. It's a very, it's a very, it's the very importance uh, of, of a prayer. To feel connected and to you, and to want to be connected. And so, uh, it will be maybe a, a part of answer to your question and to your um, worries. That the very important, the most important kind of prayer is the prayer of adoring God, of thanksgiving, and to and 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 and, and, and uh, the prayer of of, of, of worshiping. thanksgiving for bad thanksgiving for for what even for bad things for evil yes for for the phenomenon of life that we live that that He created us for all He gave to us and is giving every day every hour every minute every second even if, even if in our egoism and maybe and maybe or maybe our uh, tendency to have more and more and more uh, do not realize that he is giving graces to us every day every hour every moment and the more the more we thank for it in a in a in in in, in a very simple way just like children do Children is a key word in the Bible, in the New Testament, in, 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 Jesus, in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The more we become, but we don't, but we shouldn't begin. It's what I learned too, <laughs> a little time ago. You shouldn't only ask and ask and ask. It's like order God, do that, do that, and in this moment, in that moment, because I need it in that moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, can you be mm -hmm. thankful, really thankful for the evil, for bad things it, which happen? Of course, it's a great problem for 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 each this of us, for everyone, for each of us. But the more we pray, the more we adore, the less bad things happen to us. That's true. That's true. Because we are in exactly. the arms of God, and when we are in the arms of God. Really, we can. We just can. We just should realize. Um, I mean, uh, how to say it? Uh, visual, uh, visualize. It. Uh, sorry for my English. It's my fourth foreign language. Uh, and uh, we we just should feel children in his arms, in his tender arms. There are situations where it is possible and there are situations where it is very difficult because we have to change ourselves. We have to change ourselves. Yeah. Yes. And this is difficult. Uh, okay, I, I think it's time to close our uh, second session during the, this conference. Uh, thank you very much again, Professor Rosinska, for very, much very for interesting talk. questions.